one of the articles published recently that I sent to you, again with Michael Hollick. Michael Hollick is just always he's out there. You know, he's he's just collaborating with so many different people. But he did those response studies to see how many genes vitamin D upregulated or downregulated in three groups of healthy volunteers that took either 600 units a day, 4,000 units a day, or 10,000 units a day. It's interesting that he picked 600 and 4,000 because those are the numbers that the Institute of Medicine says, all you need is 600 and don't take more than 4,000. And 10,000, which is the estimate of how much the body makes on the low end, full body sun exposure, or bad adequate exposure, where you never burn, you never want to burn. Mm -hmm. This one which they call it one minimal erythemal dose. And after six months of taking this every day, and they monitored blood tests all along the way, there was no toxicity, you know, the vitamin D levels were higher in the 4,000 and higher in the 10,000. I forget what the numbers were. I don't get it right in front of me. I'm going to have it here in the paper. But, but it, when it was all said and done, they isolated white blood cells from them and, you know, this is where it gets really great because these scientists can do this stuff. You know, I don't, I can't do this. I don't do this stuff. I'm a clinician. I take care of patients and I help manage the hospital. And, but they, they figured out how many genes were upregulated or downregulated in the 600 group versus the 4,000 group versus the 10,000 group. It was 162 in the 4,000 in the 600 unit group a day. It was 320 in the 4,000 unit group a day. It was 1,289 in the 10,000-unit group day. Okay, well, how many genes are in the human genome and how many did vitamin D regulate? Well, so explain explain what that means to a lay person. Okay, you know, in the DNA of our cells is where the, the genes are. You know, the genetic code was deciphered. The genes that we're all familiar with are protein coding genes. Right, so some genes, make, most we always thought, well, genes make proteins. Well, as they delve into it more, you know, there are other types of things that are made that are encoded, that are, you know, genes are blueprints, right? It's a blueprint to build something. And, and most of the, in the type of blueprints that vitamin D controls make proteins. You know, Human Genome Project was a long-term project that was, published his first data in around 2000. Their goal was to sequence the human genome, and figure out how many genes there are in the human genome. We're still trying to figure it out. But their first estimates were there's about 20,000, 25,000 unique genes in the human genome. So in the nucleus of almost every cell are chromosomes. That's where the DNA are. The chromosomes are made up of DNA. DNA sequences form genes. You know, it's a, it's a real complicated thing. So you know, I'm, I'm, in, you know, I'm not, I can't get into all the details. It's really complicated, you know, but. To, to what does it mean to turn a gene on? What happens? Okay. To turn a, something has to turn genes on. Something has to turn them off. Okay. What, the, what, what are the things that do that? Hormones do that. So vitamin D is actually a steroid one. It's not a vitamin. Wonderful. Vitamins are substances that the body can't make. And you have to get them from a food source. Well, vitamin D was discovered in 1922, and they found it in the skin of laboratory animals that had been subjected to ultraviolet B radiation and cod liver oil. So you can't get it from the food source. And that was the year where they were discovering vitamins, and it was the fourth one they found, so they called it vitamin D. But you can make it in your skin. You can make it in your body, but you just have to have sunshine hitting your skin, right? So it's not a vitamin. And vitamins are cofactors in enzymatic reaction. But vitamin D is it's a hormone, and it turns genes on and turns them off. So in 2010, the study, the first author's name was Ramagopal, and he was published in Genome Research. He identified 2,776 unique binding sites for the vitamin D receptor. So, so in vitamin D, it's transformed into the active hormone form. You know, 25 hydroxy vitamin D is what we measure in the blood to see how much vitamin D we have. It has to undergo a hydroxylation reaction, turn into 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, which just has a half-life of a few hours as opposed to a couple of weeks for 25-hydroxy vitamin D. It gets made on demand when it's needed. Then it has to bind to a receptor. And then the two things get together, the vitamin D binds to the receptor and a bunch of transcription cofactors have to come bind to it, like retinoid X receptor and a bunch of other stuff. And that whole um, 
big molecule then has, has to go into the DNA. Mm -hmm. So vitamin, vitamin D binds to its receptor, all these good transcription good factors. Then it goes into the DNA and it binds to a unique binding site in the DNA. They call it, it's called the vitamin D response element. And the vitamin D response elements are all over the place. And in this study, what Rand McCullen did was he identified 2,776 unique binding sites for the vitamin D receptor. That would imply that there's 2,776 unique genes that vitamin D controls. Okay, that's just an estimate. It, it's probably much more complicated than that. There may be many more than 20,000 genes because of the way that the whole DNA works. You know, it's really, I mean, the scientists that are working on that are making amazing discoveries and it's a lot more complicated. But, so, if, so to keep it simple, if there's 20, let's say there's 24,000 genes and vitamin D controls 3,000 of them, and one eighth of the genes in the human genome are controlled by vitamin D. So the question becomes, how much do you need to make sure they're all happy? Well, in how many genes, if, 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 if um, the first author on the uh, 2019 paper I was talking about Michael Hollick was part of is a guy named Shravani. If they would have included a 20,000 unit a day group or a 30,000 unit a day group, how many genes would have been regulated? Upregulated up or downregulated? Would, would have been more than 1,029. I mean, what does would you have to use to, to see where it levels off? 